to calculate running total inside Power Pivot or data model using DAX functions, please watch this video. Hello and welcome to a new video from Power Pivot tutorial series, video number 8 or PP08. In this video, we are going to continue talking about time intelligence functions. Today, we are going to discuss the running totals. We are going to use three functions, three DAX functions, dates MTD, dates QTD, and dates YTD in order to calculate monthly, quarterly, and yearly running totals. In the previous video, PP07, we discussed the date add function, which allows us to push the dates forward or backward. And based on this, we managed to calculate quarter over quarter change. And then we looked at how we can calculate the month over month change. And finally, we looked at how to calculate week over week. And we produced a pivot table with a timeline in order to filter the dates and shift back seven days to calculate the week over week change. In this video, PP08, we are going to look at five topics. First one, how to calculate monthly running total using the function dates MTD, how to calculate quarterly running total using function dates QTD, how to calculate yearly running total using function dates YTD, and then we are going to calculate the yearly running total for last year in order to calculate the year over year change for the yearly running total. And finally, we are going to create a simple and dynamic sales dashboard in order to look at our data from different angles. At the very beginning, let's make sure that we all on the same page regarding what is running total. I'm putting here three formats of running total, the month to date running total, quarter to date running total, and also year to date running total. If you look at the daily revenue report that we have here, we have we have the days from 1st of January up to 14th of February, and also we have the revenue for each and every day. In the column of month to date, the start of the month, which is 1st of January, we have revenue of 500, and also the month to date is 500. When we move to the second day, we have 200 of revenue, and the year to date is 700, which is basically the submission of the first two days. Move another day, 600 revenue, the year to date is 1300, which is basically the summation of the three days and so on and so forth. And this will continue till the end of January when we have total revenue of the month of 11,000. When we move one day forward, being the first day of February, we are going to reset our running total or the month to date total. So at 1st of February, the revenue is 380, the running total, same 380, and then we start to accumulate till end of February. The same concept for quarters. We have 12 months of revenue, January up to December. First quarter is basically Jan, Feb, March. So the quarter to date for Jan will be same as Jan. The quarter to date for February will be the submission of Jan and Feb. And the quarter to date for March will be the summation of quarter one, Jan, Feb, and March. But when we start the second quarter at April, we reset our quarter to date formula. So we start with April. The quarter to date is also same as April. And then we start to accumulate May and June until we reach the total of the quarter. And then do another reset and so on and so forth till end of the year. Let's look at the year to date. We have 12 months. We start with January. The year to date for January is the same as January 11,000. And then we start to accumulate till we reach December, which is basically accumulating the entire year. And then at the beginning of January 24, we do a reset. And then we start over until we reach the total at December 24. So our plan in this video is to do the same calculations, but using DAX inside Power Pivot or Data Model. We are going to use the same example that we used in the previous video. So let's start by a quick reminder of the tables and the data model that we are going to use. From the diagram view, you will see that we have five tables inside our star schema. In the heart of the star schema, you will see that we have the all sales table 
containing the data for the sales of four years. On the left hand side, we have a dimension table called channel, which is basically translating the channel ID into the name of the channel. Below we have the region, it's almost the same functionality. It is just translating the region ID into the region name. On the right hand side, we have the calendar table containing all the date hierarchies that we might need. On top, we have the product table containing the name of the product, the name of the category, and also the price of each and every product. From data view and inside the measure grid, we have multiple measures already created before, but I want to remind you with the first measure that we created before, which is basically the revenue measure. In this measure, we just calculated the revenue for the four years together. This will represent the current period's revenue. So inside a pivot table, if I select any date and I use this measure, it will represent the revenue for the current period. Now we need to build a new measure for month to date revenue. I'm going to build on this revenue or capitalize on this measure in order to calculate the month to date revenue. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to give a new label. Let's call it running total. And I'm going to give a new name for the new measure. Let me call it revenue MTD for revenue month to date. Colon and equal. And let's start to build our formula. This formula will be based on the calculate function. Why calculate function? Because calculate function will help you to alter the external filter coming from the pivot table. Whenever I select a date, the revenue measure will represent the revenue for the current date. But this new measure, the revenue month to date, will represent the revenue from the start of the month until the day I am selecting. So I'm going to use the calculate function. Let me start by writing calculate. The first choice is calculate. So I'm going to hit tab and then I'm going to start by the first requirement or the first argument, which is basically the expression. In this case, I'm going to capitalize on the measure that I already created before, which is basically the revenue measure. So in order to use a measure inside a measure, I'm going to open a square bracket. I'm going to select the measure that I want. In this case will be the revenue measure, double click and then comma. The second requirement will be the filter and this filter will override the filter coming from the pivot table. So in this case, I'm going to tell Excel, please use the year to date period, not only the current date. I'm going to do so using the function called dates MTD or dates month to date. So I'm going to start by writing dates. I have multiple choices. I'm going to choose dates MTD and then double click. It will open a bracket. The only requirement is dates. So I'm going to give this function a column of dates. This column of dates will be inside the calendar table. Why? Because we are using one of the time intelligence functions and these time intelligence functions requires sequential dates and the only sequential dates or only column including sequential dates in this model will be inside the calendar table. So I'm going to write calendar and I'm going to select the column date and then tab, close the bracket for dates MTD, close the bracket one more time for calculate and then hit enter, followed by quick number formatting. And let's check how this measure works. I'm going to create a quick pivot table from the same window, from the power pivot window. I'm going to select pivot table. It will prompt me back to the Excel environment, the Excel sheet environment, new workbook, and then click on OK. Here you go, the pivot table placeholder, and here is the pivot table feed list. I'm going to select from all sales the revenue measure. I put it in the values, and then I'm going to select the newly created measure, which is basically revenue MTD. And I'm going to select some dates. The dates will be for sure inside the calendar table. I'm going to use more fields. And from more fields, I'm going to select dates inside the rows. On top of dates, I'm going to put month. And then I'm going to put year inside the filter in order to filter for a specific year. In this case, let me select a year like 2016. And from the rows filter, I'm going to select only Jan and Feb and click on OK. And here you go. We have a pivot table containing the revenues for only two months, starting from January. Let's check the data that we have. First January, we have 18,000. Same for revenue month to date, the starting of the year. 
the starting of the month we have only one day so the revenue equal to revenue mtd let's move to the second day you will see that we have 18.7 and we have 37 for month to date so the 37 accumulation of day one and two 60 in the 3rd of january accumulation of three days and so on and so forth at the end uh, at the 31st of january we have 570 let's look at the total of the month from design i'm going to subtotal and then show subtotal at the bottom you will see that 570 which is exactly the amount that we have for 31st of january moving to february the month to date measure start to reset so 1st of february 21 MTD also 21, second day start to accumulate and so on and so forth till the end of the month. Using the same concept, I'm going to create a new measure to calculate the quarter to date revenues. So let me add a new measure. I'm going to call it revenue QTD, colon and equal, exactly the same. I'm going to use calculate inside calculate i'm going to select the revenue measure comma i'm going to use a new function which is basically dates qtd inside dates qtd i need a column containing dates i'm going to use the calendar date exactly the same close the bracket for dates qtd and close the bracket for calculate and then hit enter again quick number formatting and let's have a look and see how this measure works. I'm going to copy this pivot table, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and let's do some changes. I'm going to remove the date, and also let me remove the filter from the month. So I have here 2016 with all the month, and I'm going to change the revenue MTD. Let me take it out, and from all sales, I'm going to select the new measure, which is basically revenue QTD, and let's check. For January, I have 570, same for QTD. If you check February, I have 562 and 1132, 1, which is basically the accumulation of first and second month. If you add March, you will reach 1.7 million, which is basically the accumulation of this three months. Look at April, the start of quarter two, I have the amount reset, 561 for April, same for QTD 561 and so on and so forth for the four quarters. Let's use the same concept in order to calculate the revenue year to date. Let me add a new measure revenue YTD colon and equal and let's start again using calculate. Inside calculate I'm going to use the same measure revenue open a square bracket and then select revenue and then comma the filter will be based on a new function which is basically dates ytd inside dates ytd i'm going to select calendar and the date column from the calendar table wait a second and let's check the arguments for dates ytd i have the dates which already provided by using the calendar date column and then comma there is another argument it's an optional argument because it is between two square brackets it called year end date and actually this is a very important argument because it help you to decide your fiscal year if your fiscal year is your calendar year no problem you can just skip this one or you can just determine exactly when your years end so in case that you have year end like 31st of march you can just use a double quote and type 31st slash three for March and then close the double quote and then close both brackets and you are ready to go but in our case no need for this because our calendar year is our fiscal year so I'm going to backspace this second argument and I'm going to leave the default which is basically 31st of December close the bracket twice and hit enter and quick number formatting again a check on how this works so let's go back to the Excel sheet. I'm going to copy this one, Control C and then Control V. From all sales, I'm going to uncheck revenue QTD and I'm going to check revenue year to date. And here you go. Look at these numbers now. I have January 570, same for revenue year to date. It start to accumulate from February and it will continue accumulating 
till the end of the year in December I have 6.8 which is basically the grand total of the entire year let me add the years to the rows and if you check here starting 2017 the revenue year to date is resetting and start to accumulate till the end of the year in 2018 the same and so on and so forth so now we have three types of running totals revenue month to date revenue quarter to date and also revenue year to date In video PP06, we saw how we can calculate revenue for last year. We used the function same period last year inside the calculate function in order to calculate the revenue for the last year. So whenever I use this measure with any date, it will give me the revenue for the same period, but in the previous year. Suppose that I want to calculate similar measure, but for year to date, meaning that I need to look at last year's year to date revenue for any point of time in all cases i'm going to put on top of the screen now the link for pp06 and let's go directly and try to calculate this measure together so i'm going to add a new measure this measure will be revenue ytd but for last year so i'm going to add ly colon and equal and again i'm going to use the same concept i'm going to use the calculate function but this time the measure i'm going to use inside the calculate function won't be the revenue measure it will be revenue last year measure so i'm going to add a square bracket and then i'm going to use the revenue last year double click and then comma again i'm going to use dates ytd so i'm going to type dates my last option or my last selection dates ytd inside the function i'm going to use the calendar date the column for the date inside the calendar table and for sure my fiscal year is my calendar year so i'm not going to use the second argument or the optional argument so i'm going to close the bracket twice and hit enter again quick formatting let me add a new measure to calculate the difference between the revenue year to date this year and revenue year to date last year so i'm going to call this variance versus last year year to date colon and equal this will be a simple subtraction between two measures. First one will be revenue year to date. Second one revenue year to date last year and hit enter quick number formatting. Let me calculate the change year on year, but for the year to date. So I'm going to use these two measures. So let me add a new measure. I'm going to call it year over year percent YTD colon and equal. I'm going to use the divide function exactly like what we did in the previous video, video PP07. So I'm going to type divide. The numerator will be the variance versus last year year to date. And then comma, the numerator will be revenue last year year to date. Close the bracket and hit enter. This time the number formatting will be percentage. Let me call this section revenue YTD last year. Let's try to use some of the measures that we created today in order to create a simple and dynamic sales dashboard or sales report. You can see that we have here a pivot table containing the revenue absolute, revenue year on year change, revenue year to date, and the year to date year on year change. Also, we have some slices. We can change the year, we can change the month, and also we can select the region. We have here the channels for the sales and also the sales category for each channel. Let's go directly and try to create this together. I'm going to start by adding the pivot table from the insert ribbon on the left hand side pivot table from data model existing worksheet and OK. Let's select some measures. I'm going to select the revenue year on year change revenue year to date and finally year over year change year to date. From the channel, I'm going to select the channel in the rows and also from product, I'm going to select category and I think it's good to go. It's a very good report so far. Let me do some quick formatting for this report. From design on the left hand side, subtotal, show all subtotals at top of the group and also I can go to pivot table analyze. I can uncheck show the buttons and also show the field header. This is much better as a dashboard. 
and also I can go to options and from options I can uncheck auto fit column width on update and click on OK now we are ready we can just add some slicers from pivot table analyze insert slicers I'm going to the all tab I'm going to select from more fields I'm going to select month and year down I can select a slicer for the region and click on OK and here you go you have three slicers let's start by the year I'm going to put it on top of this table while pushing on the alt key I'm going to drag and move let me replace it here why I'm using alt because alt will help you in order to fit it inside the grid 100% again while pressing the alt I'm going to increase the width and also I'm going to decrease the height now I need to do some formatting for this slicer while selecting the slicer from the slicer menu on the right hand side let me increase the columns to four because I have I can just put five or six because maybe I will get some more years also I can get rid of the header so I can go to slicer settings and uncheck display headers and click on OK I can decrease the height of the column so I can go to the height and decrease to 0.2 this is very good let me do the same for the month while pushing the alt key I'm going to place it just down to the year slicer let me do the same very quickly from the slicer settings uncheck display header and click on OK let me increase the columns to 12 and hit enter let me decrease the height I think now it's fitting but the problem that the width of the button itself is too small I can just increase the column width here that's very easy and also I can increase the width of both slicers together I'm going to select both of them and while selecting alt I'm going to add like this I think now it's fitting perfectly let me do some changes to the region while pressing the alt I'm going to put it on the left hand side decrease the width and then increase the height in this case I can just go to the slicer option and I can increase the height let's say up to 0.4 or 0.45 I think it's fitting now and finally I can get rid of the header and click on OK and here you go a very simple and dynamic dashboard or sales report you can select the year you can select the month and you can change the region based on your needs if you want to select the all region you can just right click and clear filter from region and all working perfectly that was all for today if you like this video please like it leave me a comment and subscribe you will find some useful links here please check them out see you in next video and thank you very much for your time and bye